Well, good morning, everybody. We are back at Brighton Marina on the East Wall. And today we are going to be targeting a mixed bag of species. I was hoping to come down for another place session, but conditions are really not right for that at all. There's a lot of colour in the sea out there. It's still pretty choppy. Yesterday there were gusts, gusting winds over 40 miles an hour from, I think it was southwesterlies. So it's really chopped up the sea, put a lot of colour in it. Uh, conditions wise today the wind swung around uh, northwestish, but it's going to take a little while for that sea to calm down and for the colour to drop back out so I'm hoping in a couple of days I might get back down maybe fish Brighton Beach if the sea has calmed down but I've already got one rod out there in the water and now we're going to set the other one up and get cracking so yeah mixed species the target and as I go through the video we'll look at my rigs and bait for the day Fabulous, let's hope for some fish. So let's take a look at the bait for the session. I've got it all packed up here in a Tronix Pro, uh, one of the smaller cool bait bags that they do. So let's take a look at what's inside. We have four wraps, four wraps of fresh lug. I've got some prawns, these were what I had left over from my last session down here. They were still pretty frozen when I got them home, so back in the freezer they went. And today I've also got some mussels. So that's it for the day. Four, lo four lots of fresh lug, prawns and mussels. So we'll see how they get on. See what catches us the fish. So here's one of my rigs for the day. We're going to take a closer look. It's a two clip down rig. Uh, with 24 inch snoots and what we have there is a size 4 uh, super match saltwater super match and above that I've just got my little usual sequin with a micro bead and a rig gum stop and the same the same snood at the top of the rig another 24 inch and we've got the spring there on the top snood just half a spring and that's going to provide some tension so that it doesn't unclip during the cast. And we can see again there the business end, size four, saltwater super match with the bait stop. And we've got, as well as the spring there, we've got the little size six swivel. In the middle of the rig, I've got another bead trapped with two, sorry, bead trapped, another swivel trapped with a couple of beads, but that's a cascade swivel because the top hook's going to clip down on there. And at the bottom of the rig, I've got an imp with a six ounce grip lead. So we'll get this baited up and then we'll have a look at it all clipped up. What we're going to do now is take a look at how I'm baiting up the two hook clip down rig. I have here two lug and the first thing I'm going to do is trim the ends off. So what are we going to do there? I've got the two tops, the two heads of the worms, just going to nick the very ends of those and then the other end we've got the the sandy tails there they're going to come off so just line up the meaty bit of the worms snip that away so there I've got my two trimmed worms I'll just put my scissors down now these are really nice and fresh you can probably see they're quite firm there I'm just going to slide these onto my baiting needle So there's one, and I'm putting these on tail first, or what was the tail first, slide those both on, there we go, it's two fairly small baits there, and now I'm going to get my rig, so this is the two hook clip down rig that I just went through, and get the snood for the top hook here, now I'm going to check the position of my bait stop compared to the size of the worm, I just need to move that up a little bit. There we go. Oh. Get the right end of the bait needle. So we're going to hold that nice and tight. Slide that worm up. A little bit more room needed. So there we go. That worm is nice and straight. The stop, the sequin stop is just there holding it in place. That's not going to slide up that snood when I cast it out. So I'm going to do exactly the same on the bottom hook now. 
So here we've got the hook. That bait stops in just about the right place. I can always adjust it in a moment. Again, hold it nice and tight. Slide that worm around. And there we go. So all that's left to do is to get this clipped up and cast out. Woohee! So I'm just getting my second rod set up now. Again, my standard rod and reel for the marina. I've got my Shimano Altegra 14,000 paired up with my Tronics Pro Zenon C6 low diameter rod. I think this rod's 13 foot 2, let's just check that. Uh, where does it say the length? Oh yeah, 13 foot 2. Um, as I said in my last video down here, with the slightly cramped casting conditions, this length of rod works really well for me down here. So we'll just get this set up, and we'll get that rig, the two at clip down rig, on here, and we'll get it sent out. So there we go, all the lines up there. You might also notice I've added a bit of mighty bright tip tape on to the tip and the butt section. That's because I've got two of these rods and I always like to make sure I put the same tip with the same butt. So the other one, I haven't put that tip tape on. So there you go, a little tip for you. If you've got matching rods, you want to always make sure you put the right two pieces together as it were. A little bit of mighty bright tip tape on there. Let's get this rig clipped on. Right, so that's rig attached. Now it's clipped onto the rod. It's going to be easier for me to sort out the bait clips. So first time I've used this rig, so it might need a little bit of adjustment. You see? Yeah, so I need to move that top sorry, the middle swivel, swivel in the middle of the rig body, down the snood, until, there we go, a little tiny bit further. So we just want that to clip nicely on the bottom there without any slack line in either the rig body or the snood. And then we're going to do the same with the other one. So again, I need to slide this down a little bit. As you can see here, there's a lot of slack line in the rig body, that's no good. So I just need to slide that rig gum stop down. There we go. And that is now all nicely clipped up and ready to go. So the waves just breaking on the arm there. Right, let's get the bait's out. Make sure my drag's tight. Get the finger stool on. Even though I'm only flicking it, I still like to use a finger stool with a fixed ball. Go as far back as I can, that weight on the back of the wall there. There we go. Very gentle little flick. Not too far out. We'll see where the fish are. So the second rig we're going to look at that I'm using today is the torpedo rig. So again, I've got a spring at the top there for this swivel. So that's got a bit of play. Make sure we get tension when we clip it up. I've got a three foot snood at the top there, that's a pretty long one. Again, the bait stop, same hook, size for saltwater super match. Middle of the rig, standard swivel this time, not a cascade swivel. Again, clipped in with, held in place with rig gum stops. And the bottom hook, size for saltwater super match, the bait stop, but this time, on the snood, there's a cascade swivel and a little mini rig clip. So the cascade swivel is going to be where we hook our top hook 
when we're going to cast it out. And the role of that mini rig clip means if I hook a flatty and I want to unhook through the gills, I don't have to pass that cascade swivel through the gills, which can be a bit harmful for the fish. So we can just unclip that little bit of snood there at the bottom, pass that short length of line through the gills, turn the hook and pop it out. Bottom of the rig, we've got the imp, the bottom hook's going to get clipped on that and our six ounce grip. So we're going to get this one baited up and I'm going to use lug on the top and muscles on the bottom. So we'll see how we get the muscles put on. So there's the worm I'm going to put on the top hook. I've actually put a little bit of bait elastic on this one because the worm itself, when I slapped it down, it didn't firm up quite so well as the others. So I've used fine baitex on that. And again, I've top chopped the head and the tail off because that's going to let the juices flow out of the worm a little bit, help get a centrail going. So let's get this slid on. Exactly the same as before. Hold it nice and tight. And you can see the stop there is positioned just right to hold that worm neatly on the line and stop it sliding up. So let's take a look at how we do the muscles. Right, so I've got some muscles out of my cool bag. There we go. I have Tronix Pro Baytex Fine Bait Elastic. And I've also got this three pronged baiting tool. And one of these prongs has a little hole in it. That's where we're gonna put the hook once we've got the muscles whipped on here. So I'm not quite sure how many of these need. I've got a good handful. I'm probably not gonna need that many. I'm gonna take these and just push them on to the bait needles here. Push a few on. Maybe I'm going to use four. That's three on there already. Another one. So that's going to be quite a chunky bait. I'll just go and pop the rest of these down that I didn't need. Whoops, dropping it on the floor. I don't want to throw the bait away. Right, we get those popped down. Now I'm going to get my elastic and I'm going to really whip these on. Start off quite gently because they are a delicate bait. Make sure they get a really good whipping because this is what's going to keep them on the hook. So we can see that there. So it's quite a compact, smallish bait. And we want to make sure it's really securely whipped on here. Now I'm going to get my hook. Bring that a bit closer. Got the hook here. And what I'm going to do is just nick that through. In fact, I'm not going to use the little hole for the hook. I'm going to do it slightly differently the way I've whipped these on. Doing it the way that's going to make my life easiest. I'm just pushing the hook in and back out of the muscle. There we go, that hook's nice and proud. And we're going to keep whipping this on over the hook and over the snood line to make sure that is held securely in place because this bait elastic is effectively what is keeping this bait on the hook and we want to whip it in after so we can be sure that hook's not going to turn so we want the point proud So there we go, now I can slide the tool out of the bait, I'll just put the lead on the ground. That slides out beautifully, look at that. And there we have our mussels, whipped on, beautifully neat bait. That's going to fly nicely through the air, it's nicely streamlined and it's much, much easier to put your mussels on using a tool like this. Now the rain has just started, so I'm going to cover up the camera and hopefully the rain will clear off again before we catch a fish. So yeah, mussels and lug on the torpedo rig. If you're not sure what the torpedo rig is, there's a video on my channel where you can check out how to make it. And good luck with it. I hope it works for you because I think it's a really neat rig for when you want to fish at distance. We're going to get it chucked out and see what we catch. Well, what can I say? We have been greeted with a stunning rainbow. 
can't get much better really out fishing peace and quiet and beautiful rainbow in the sky look at that in fact there's just second one just starting to appear on the left of the really bright one it's not supposed to rain much today but i don't mind a bit of rain if we get a beautiful rainbow in the sky anyway that's enough about rainbows this is not a rainbow video it's a fishing video and what we want is to catch some fish well i haven't seen any bites on the first rod i chucked out um, which i chucked out before i started filming so it's time to reel that one in and change the rig over get some fresh baits chucked out uh, i've got the torpedo rig all baited up with that lug and the muscles so anyway let's get it reeled in see if we got anything like i say no bites though so i'm not expecting anything on here let's have a wind down into it i don't know maybe i've got a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow no nothing on here so we'll find out what condition the baits are in Whoa. don't want to get a soaking at this time of day well, there's definitely no fish let's see what the baits are like i've got a loop rig on this rod which we'll have a better look at but yeah don't look like anything's had any interest in that a little bit of tanglage going on there which i'll sort out but no sign of life so let's get the torpedo rig on and get it chucked out so here we have it torpedo rig loaded with muscles and a rag all clipped up six ounce grip ready to be launched I need a slightly shorter drop here I've got to make sure that's not twisted around the rod at the top there we go get the finger stall on and we're good to get it launched just a very quick overhead flick oops mind the wall that crosswind we have here is really taking a lot of line off the spool on the cast just let the lead sink and grip and i'll wind in all the slack line that the wind took off to make sure we're in contact with the lead nearly there there we go and i'm going to rest that down with the wall and loosen the drag off a touch just in case the big one comes along well i thought i had a couple of little taps on the two at clip down that i chucked out and we have our first fish of the day a tiny little pin whiting still brings a smile to my face even though it's not really what i'd like to catch because there's, there's one here there's probably thousands but you never know this one looks pretty skinny actually we're going to get him unhooked chuck him back and hope for something a bit better so there we go unhooked ready to go back i don't know if you can make out the teeth on that sharp little teeth so i'm always really careful with these short shank hooks i'm using to make sure i don't get my finger in the mouth and get the skin shredded anyway let's chuck this guy back there we go live to swim another day maybe it'll get eaten by a cod fatten it up and then i'll catch the cod in my dreams anyway time to get the baits back out see if we can get some more fish so this is the two hook loop rig that i've got with me we have a juicy prawn that i've whipped on the bottom and a lugworm on the top this one's got 18 inch snoots so we get this chucked out and you can see again here because i'm using the cascade swivel on the loop rig snood i've got that little mini clip same as i had on the torpedo rig so yeah let's see if we can get a fish time to cast the bait out Oh. 
up that one just a little bit further. Still only about probably 60, 70 yards. But let's see what's out there. I'm gonna get that grip lead to sink. Make sure it's gripped. And then do the usual tighten up the line. There we go, we just feel the weight there. It's a little bit more loose line to come in. And once I've wound down into that lead, I'll loosen off the drag. So there we go, baits are out. In with a chance. Well, I've got a bite. I was just about to go through some baiting up and I noticed I have a bite on the right hand rod, which is probably the only one in shot. So I'm just gonna pop my baiting kit down on the ground, I'll deal with that in a moment. And let's keep an eye on this bite. I'll just try and get the camera a bit more positioned better. There we go. Right. Shall we see if there's anything on here? Tighten down into it. Oh, grip that's a little bit gripped. Let's just say the obvious. <laughs> oh, there's definitely some weight on here though. Now that weight's come out. Yeah, nice bend in the rod. This is where we find out we've got a dogfish, probably. Definitely a nice bend in this rod. If it's anything of any size, I'll be a bit worried because I've only got a size four hook on here and no drop net. Oh, what is it? It's a dog, a dirty dog. Not even a big one, just a wriggly one. Let's get him winched up. These rods are great for winching fish up the side. And the reel has got a bit of winching power in it as well. Right, there we go. Dog. Could do with a bit more line out really. Let's hold that a bit higher, there we go. Dogfish. <laughs> get him unhooked, chuck him back. There we go. Well, two fish, two species. It's not all bad. It's not all bad. We're in on the fish. So let's take a look at how I'm gonna unhook the dogfish. I've got a T-bar, that's my chosen unhooking tool. And I've got a rag, because dogfish do have very sandpapery skin and I've got soft skin. Right, this was caught on the lug, by the way. I'm gonna get my T-bar on that hook, there we go. Oh, come on, keep still. Right, T-bar on the hook, you just give it a tug like that, hook comes straight out, it's a brilliant tool. And then I'm gonna get my rag to pick him up because I don't want to be scraped. And there we go, we're gonna chuck him back. Just put the T-bar down. Don't wanna accidentally throw that over the side. And off he's gonna go. Down the gap there. Back to live another day. This is where I'm glad I bought several rags with me because this one is now soaking wet. But anyway, two fish. So thought we'll be catching that dogfish. I hadn't got my other rig baited up. And as I said, I was just about to go through how I'm gonna put the prawn on. So let's get my tools back here. I'm gonna start off by saying I'm gonna use the three prong tool again. I've got my scissors, I've got my prawn, and I've realized I forgot my bait elastic, so let's grab that. Pop my tools down here, there we go. Now we've got bait elastic in there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the prawn in half. So I've got the tail piece and like the head piece, if you like. Well, the head piece is quite fat and I'm just gonna chop that again down the center this time to make two thinner pieces. And I just find it easier to whip it onto the bait tool when I've chopped it into pieces like that. So we're gonna get our three prong tool here. 
and I'm going to take the tail piece first and slide that onto one of the pins like so take another piece and slide it onto the other pinned piece like two of these are like pointy pins and the, the third spike has got a little hole for the hook which I'm not using for these baits oops nearly dropped it so three, prawn, three pieces of that prawn arranged around the prongs at the end of my bait elastic Again, this is the Baytex Fine Bait Elastic. I really like this stuff. You can hardly see it when it's whipped on the bait. And I'm just gonna keep whipping these up until they're really secure. There you go. Just like I did with the mussels. All right, it's quite a lot of elastic on there. Snap that off get my hook so here's the hook I'm going to take that I'm going to pass it in to the prawn and back out so the hook point again is nice and proud there hopefully you can see that and then we need more bait elastic to make sure that hook it's really firmly held in place there so that the point stays proud. Quite a lot of elastic. There we go. Just snap that off. Some people tie a knot. I don't think you need it. I've never had trouble just snapping it like that. And then we very carefully slide our bait tool out and there we go one prawn ready to be chucked out so there's the prawn clip down on the bottom hook this is the two hook clip down rig with the two foot snoods and we've got a lug worm up the top there hopefully that's coming out all right so yeah, get the baits back out in the water. I always like to put my hood down when I cast. I find it inhibits my ability to twist a little bit when I need to. Check that's not too twist, not twisted at all around the top eye. There we go. Ready to get them out. I forgot to put my finger stool on, won't hurt for one cast. I just find repeatedly casting through the day takes its toll on my finger if I don't use a finger stool. I'm forgetting to do it just once, ain't gonna cause me any problems. It's not like I'm casting with braid here, so I'm not gonna slice my finger. Got 20 pound Blaze Mono on my reels in green. I love using this line at night because it shows up really well in the headlamp. And you know what? The sky is clearing, there's a lot of blue sky here now. The rainbow's gone. And hopefully, we won't see any more rain today. I'm still hoping we might get some place, but I'll show you the color of the water. Hang on, bear with me. So there's the sea. And as you can see, it isn't clear that we want for place. Brown water, brown fish. Living up to its reputation, so far we've had white in dogfish. That's what we would expect to catch in brown water. But yeah, let's hope it clears out as the day goes on. So some of you might have never fished down the marina before, but want to come down and not sure how it all works. So the first thing to do is check that the arms are open and you can do that by going to the Tackle Box website. If you type that into Google Tackle Box Brighton Marina, then the fishing tackle shop that's here will come up and on their website they have a blog which is updated very regularly about when the arms are open. Now if the weather's fine and the arms are open then the east arm which I'm fishing today at the moment is open from 7am to 5pm. Uh, the west arm I'm not actually sure of the opening times on there but it'll all be on the website and when you get down here you just walk up find a spot to fish and when the warden comes around you pay for your rods and it's currently, this is uh, April 2024, 
six pounds for one rod or seven pounds for two. And if you've got anybody with you if, who's not fishing, you still have to pay for them to be here. So it'd be six quid for them to be sitting with you. Now, I also got asked on my last video down here about parking. When you come into the marina, uh, there's a big multi-storey car park, which will be on your right as you come in and you can park in there for free. And when you park there, you need to walk along to the, the east arm if you're going to fish the east. And it's a pretty long walk. You've got to walk all through the marina and then up the arm to whichever bay you want to fish with. So I tend to travel light when I come here. Let's just have a spin around. You can see what gear I've got with me. Uh, I'll just twist the camera there. And you can probably see I have my rucksack just up there. And I've got a bucket and it's got a few bits in it. And the little bait pot there, the Tronics Pro little bucket, uh, white bucket thing that just came out of my rucksack. So I have that and my two rods and that's it. So yeah, that's all for the long walk. And it does me for the day. Everything fits in the rucksack pretty much, except I had my flask in the bucket and carried that up. So that's how it works if you're fishing down the marina, folks. Let's put the tripod back down. So yeah, if you're interested, give it a go. Well, folks, the warden's just been up and collected his seven quid off me for my two rods. And he's also tied a bit of tape across there because this is the very last bay you can fish on. You can probably hear it in the background, even if you can't see it very well. It's making a horrendous noise. So I'm going to move back one bay further to the east and hopefully get away from that noise a little bit. Well, I was just reeling in to move bays and we have another really tiny whiting beautifully lip hooked this time so i'll get this chap unhooked and send him on his way there we have him cute little whiting well now i'm up to three whiting and a dog all the fish so far have been on the fresh lug so the rig i'm rebaiting now i'm going to put two lug on there and see if we can get a double hook up instead of just one fish at a time. And the rig I'm baiting up, this is the Turk loop rig with the 18 inch snoods. Just had a white in on the top hook. To be fair, even though I haven't caught anything on the prawns, the prawns were on the bottom hook of this rig and something had had a munch on them but didn't hook up. Um, so I will keep trying with the prawns and the mussels as the day goes on because you never know. You never know what the fish are going to want to take. And if I'm honest, I'm hoping to have a few lug left because I want to go out fishing again in a couple of days. I've got some more fresh lug at home. A little bit fresher than the ones I brought down today. So they should still be all right if I manage to get out on Thursday as well. If not, I'll be packing those down in the freezer, ready for a future trip. But fingers crossed the weather's looking pretty good for the rest of the week, as far as getting out fishing goes anyway. Might be a bit wet, but I don't mind a bit of rain, especially if I'm on the beach in my shelter. Um, but we keep trying today. Might have just had a little pull down on one of the rods that's out of shot. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that. Ooh, water coming up down the arm. The sound might have come out in the in the mics, but you won't have seen that. I think I'm fishing just far enough down to be out the worst of the splashes. Anyway, three whiting, one dog, all on lug. Well, I think I think I've just had a pull down on the left hand rod, the one nearest the camera, this one. So we're going to keep an eye on it, see if we get another bite. I hope it isn't a seagull because I've got a little flock of seagulls flying around in front of me. I never like catching a seagull, it's not what we're here for and it's certainly no fun bringing them in and untangling them. There's just a little pool down there. There's a bit of a swell which is moving the rod tips a little bit. So I need to pay a bit more attention to decide if it's a bite. I'm also getting pretty hungry. I left home at quarter past six this morning to get here for just after the arm opened at seven. Uh, didn't have any breakfast before I set off. I've had a banana since I got here, but I'm still pretty hungry. So once I've decided whether there's a fish on here or not, I think I'm going to grab some food. I don't know. Is there, isn't there? Let's lift down into it. I can always pop it back down. But it doesn't feel like there's anything on it. Tighten the drag. Oh, well, if there is something on here, it's small. I'll pop that back down. There we go. Tighten that back up.
Let's drag back off. Right, we'll leave that alone and grab something to eat. Well, I just made myself a cup of tea and got out a bit of bread and hummus for my brekkie. And whatever was biting on this rod seems to come back. So let's have another lift in. No, nope, still don't think it's there. Oh well, I'm gonna reel this in now because I've had a few pull downs on it. Also, that grip lead hadn't re gripped very well. It might have just been the waves moving it. So we get this reeled in, fresh bait chucked out, and then I can enjoy some food. A bit more relaxed. Oh, there's a bit of a breeze. Oh, there is a fish. I think it's the biggest one yet. Let's see. Let's have a look at this one. Woohoo! To be fair, it's not as small as it looked coming through the water. But there we go, another whiting on the lug and nothing has touched the mussels that's on the bottom hook there. We just take a look at that. So they're all much of a muchness, these whiting, absolutely miniature, but untouched mussel bait. So I get this guy unhooked, chuck him back. There we go. Pop him back down the gap and he'll swim off just fine. Now it's time for some brekkie. Well, cheers everyone. Breakfast time. Can't wait to get a bit of caffeine in me. I'm a bit of a tea addict, I always need my cup of tea. So I'll eat, eat my breakfast, drink my tea, and watch the rods. Well, just in the middle of my breakfast still, I had a better pull down on this rod. I'm just gonna lift into it, see if there's anything here. Oh, perhaps I'll tighten the drag first. a bit weird. Not sure there's a fish on here. Felt a bit like it was pulling through something. Sorry, I was still chewing my bit of bread here. I don't think there's a fish on here. No seagulls around, so I don't think it was one of them. Oh, it's very light. Nothing on there. Oh well, it got me off up, up off my backside to come and check out if there was anything on it. Let's see, baits look untouched, so yeah, must have just been a weird an anomaly. Cock can hardly say it. But yeah, anyway, I'll chuck it back out. I won't bother changing the bait. I haven't baited up my spare rig and these worms haven't been out long, so good to go back out. Let's get the baits back in the water. Ooh, the sun's gone in, it's got a bit nippy. I was hoping it wasn't gonna rain again, but it feels like it might. It might just be about to rain. There we go. Launch back out into the depths. Maybe we'll get another whiting. Oh, I live for catching whiting. <laughs> Great fish for beginners and kids. Even though I'm after a mixed bag today, I would rather catch something that's not a whiting, but when there's nothing else about, whiting will do me. Certainly keep a bit of action, keep the rod tip moving, a bit of entertainment, and if anything, keep you warm by keeping you on, on your toes. Still got to tighten that up a bit more. So there we go, baits are back out. Now I can go back to my cup of tea, which is rapidly cooling down. Well, I think I just had a bite on the left hand rod. 
Have a little pull down there. Let's just keep watching this. See if it goes again. There it goes. Look at that, there it goes. Some of those pull downs are just the swell, but the rattly ones, that's a fish. Let's just keep watching it. Probably another one of them whiting. Keeping me entertained. Whiting infested seas in April. I was hoping they might have gone by now, but with all this stormy weather, keeping the water nice and murky, it's hardly surprising they've stuck around really. I was hoping for a nice run of spring place, but it hasn't happened yet. Maybe though, with the northerlies we've got over the next few days, that sea will clear out. And you never know, the place might start to come in in numbers. Last time I was down here, I had three place, which was nice, but not the, the dozen I would have liked on a decent place session. Right, I've left this one a little while. Let's slipped into it and see if the fish is on the hook. Oh, I grip this good. Oh, is it on there? Is it on there? Oh, I struggle with these whiting, they're so small. It can be very hard to tell. If it is, it's another tiny one. They're all tiny. Not like out in Norway, getting them one and a half pound as standard. Did we get him? No, we missed him. Missed the ting. Oh, it's had a munch though. Have a look at that top hook. Look at that. Something has definitely munched that lugworm. Anyway, I'll get this sorted out. Quickly finish my breakfast first before I bait it up and chuck it back out. And then we'll be back in the water trying to catch another fish. This time we've gone for mussels on the bottom, lug on the top torpedo rig get it chucked out sun's come back out which is lovely we've got a bit of blue sky but still blowing and absolutely coolly as you can probably pick up in the background that tape up the next bay is flapping away anyway get the baits out there we go back in the water ready for another ting Once I've got this gripped in well, just time we're back to that for a second. Once I've got this gripped in well, I'll get my spare rig baited up and I'm going to change the baits on the other rod, which has been out there quite a while now. That it could do with the freshen up. You never know, I might even have a ting on there. That's the other one that's got the double lug on it. Strangely, been sitting there very quietly. I was expecting that to be getting bites. Maybe it has been getting bites and I've just not noticed. Anyway, we'll take a look in a sec and see if we've got anything. So I'm just about to reel that left the right hand rod in. It's been out there a while. I've baited up my loop rig with a couple of lugs. Hopefully they come out all right. I've got my arm in the way, that's better. There we go, a couple of lug on there, all nicely clipped down, ready to be launched. So let's see, let's see if there's anything on this rod. Right. Oh, feels like nothing. That wind is getting a bit pokey. I think I must have changed direction a little bit. There we go, nothing on that. Oh, I thought that was the one with double lug, but actually it's got prawn and lug. Right, clip the spare rig on. I always like to have a spare one ready, unless I'm drinking my cup of tea and then the cup of tea comes first. So there we go, ready to go out. Get the drop length about right. Stick the finger stool on. A bit 
more line out. There we go. That nice and tight, not twisted. Get these baits chucked back out. I've got a feeling we might only be getting whiting and dogfish today. But we've got to keep trying, see if we get something different. Right, so I'll get the bug I just reeled in, baited up, chuck it back out on the other rod. Maybe I'll go for double prawn just to prove the prawns aren't attracting any fish. Or dare I say it, there is a glimmer of warmth. But more importantly, we're going to reel this one in, see if we've got any fish on the end. This one has got some weight. I think I might be coming up my other line, either that or I've got a bite on the other rod. Find out soon enough that right, we've got a fish. And I must have had a bite on the other rod as well. Just move across a bit so I can get this one up. I bet you can guess what kind of fish it is. Oh yes. It's another one. It's another whiting. Anyway, unhooked, chuck back, fresh bait, same routine. I really want to think I've been fishing for a while. Oh, this one's taken the hook down, so I'm going to have to go and get my T-bar. So here's the T-bar. Again, I've got a size 4 hook on here. That's what I'm using on all my rigs. So just while I'm working out how to get this off, why am I using size 4 hooks? Well, I said it was a species hunt day. And that included, if I was hope, very hopeful, given the colour of this water, there still might have been a flatty around. Look at that, easy. Come out easy, that did. And I can catch big fish on small hooks, but not the other way around. If I was actually targeting whiting and dogfish, I'd be using 1-0 saltwater champions on my rigs. But as it's a species hunt day, we've got small hooks, but the pattern I've picked is a pretty strong one, so if a big fish does come along, we should still be able to get it in. Although no drop net does kind of hinder things. But anyway, there we go. Little fish, little hook, big fish, little hook and big hook. Whoa. Right, let's get this chap chuck back before I do him an injury. There we go. He swam straight off, no harm done. And time for me to get my rig that I've just baited up with two prawns chucked out. So here we have the two hook clip down rig with prawn on each hook and we're expecting this to catch nothing. I think it's always really good to come out and experiment with different baits because you never know what's going to work on the day. So today we had the mussels, the lug and the prawns. If the weather conditions had been more favourable for the flatties I'd have been expecting certainly the mussels to be doing something good but it's just not the right conditions today for those but I thought it was still worth trying to see if we could hook anything on them but we've still got time it's still probably mid to late morning now I'm not quite sure what the time is maybe coming up to 11 I've lost count of how many whiting I've caught by this point it's still just the one dogfish and I think it is literally just me fishing down here now the guy who was further down the arm has gone. He left at about nine o'clock. And when the warden come up for his money, he thought I was the only one here. Bait's back out and we're still in with the chance. I just cast the other rod back out. I noticed I had a load of slack line on this one. So I've just wound in some of the slack line, turned the camera on. Let's see if we've got anything on here. That feels oddly light. It's a fish, not one that would have given me slack line though. There we are. Yet another whiting to add to the tally. Oh, let's see if I can hold him a bit better. There we go. All skinny as, tiny as, chucking back. Yep, we're going to need the T-bar again, so I'll just go grab that. So if you're not sure about how to use the T-bar, as I said, what we're going to do is get this worm out of the mouth. I'll come over a bit closer. Hang on. I'll move the camera closer to the fish. 
to see if we can get a real good close up of this. Right, so down in the mouth there's the hook down there. I could really use a slightly smaller T-bar for the size of these whiting, but it's the only one I've got. I'm going to pop that in, very gently. Now it's around the hook, and then what we do is just literally pull like that and off the fish comes. So you can see unhooked, minimal fuss, good to chuck him back. And there we go, off he swims. So I've just chucked yet another whiting back. And I've got here a very tangled rig from another whiting. They do tend to spin a little bit. Look at this, state of this. So I need to get all this untangled before I can bait it up. Oh, it really is a mess, bloody hell. Hopefully I can say that on camera. Muscles again, untouched. But it's going to take me a little while to untangle this. Before I can chuck it back. It's the trouble with whiting, they do spin, 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 and then we end up having to sort of mess like this out. In fact, I think the best way of me getting baits back out in the water more quickly is to probably go and get that rig I just reeled in and unhook the whiting from rather than faffing around with this for too long. I'll just spend another few seconds on it because sometimes they can just magically do one thing and it all comes untangled this is where I could do with being 20 years younger and being able to see better there we go that's all untangled so we're going to strip the old bait off as best I can chuck that down into the seat there we go and the other hook with the muscles Again, nothing coming on those muscles at all today, which is a bit of a shame, but it's just not the right conditions for the flatties. So to get the muscles off, remember I just elasticate them on with a little nick of the hook through the top and very carefully gonna cut through that elastic so I don't wanna cut through my hook snood. Done that before, just to get them off. Very gently run that down the elastic Any little nick in that snood is gonna weaken it and clearly I don't want that to happen. So there we go. Muscles off, a little bit more to pick off there, get that bait elastic off. And now we're good to rebait. So I'll finish my first wrap of lug, get a fresh one out. It's only my second wrap of lug, even though I've been catching a lot of fish, haven't been getting through too much bait, which is good. So we're gonna set two more lugs out, give them a quick slap toughen up nice when you slap them down there we go so again the usual trim the tails get rid of the sandy tails and just trim a tiny bit off the top so that again that, just to reiterate that lets the juices flow out better and we're going to slide these on the baiting needle and then they're going to be good to go on our hooks so they're really firm after you give them a good slap. So there we have that. So we've got our cleaned off hooks ready to go. Oops. Grab that. Get that on. There we go, perfect. And the bottom hook. Nice and tight, slide that around the eye, up the snood, and there we have it. Rebaited, just need to get that clipped up, chucked on the rod, and get it cast back out. Well, I'm just reeling in the double prawn, which has unsurprisingly sat there doing nothing. And what do we have on the end? Oh, two prawns. <laughs> Look at that, there we go. I think we're gonna give up on the prawns for today because that little experiment hasn't worked. There we go, normal service resumed, two black lug, clipped down on the loop rig, ready to go. 
There we go, that's better. So maybe we'll catch a ting, ting, ting. Now we're back on the bait that's working today. Don't get me wrong, prawns have their day. But I've caught some stunning dabs on them out in Norway. Best one I had out there in September was 39 centimetres on prawn. And anyone who watches the Shore Hunters YouTube channel might have seen that. That was the day of the dabs that day, back in September. I caught some beauties. Getting back out there in July, hopefully get some place this time. Never had a Norway place before, so that's on my wish list. I do love catching my flatties. So yeah, anyway, back to the lug. Let's see if we can pick up another one. Well folks, it's been a very long time since the last bite. Uh, the t state of the tide is really not conducive to bringing in the fish right now. But we're still out here, and in my book, it absolutely beats sitting at home. So I'm still pleased to be out, even though the fishing has slowed right off. But time to reel these in now, get some fresh baits chucked out. Uh, see what the time is. I forgot to put my watch on today, so I've got to keep looking at my phone. It's 10 to 12. I'm going to give it maybe another hour or so, and then head home. So anyway... There's still a chance of another fish. Let's see. Let's see if we can get another one. So I've just reeled one of them rods in. I wanted to show you this. That is some evidence that there might have been a flatty out there. You see that hook's been turned. And what flatfish do is they'll suck the bait in. This is certainly what place would do anyway. They suck that bait in and they'll sort of spit it and suck it and spit it and suck it. And that can turn the hook around like that. And you can see, looking at that bait, a lot of the colour's gone from it. So it does indeed look like something's had a really good suck on that, but sadly, not got hooked. Anyway, time to get fresh baits chucked out and see if we can get another hook up. There we go. Fresh baits clipped on. Ready to fly. So this is how quiet it's gone. That bait is untouched. And that other bait is also untouched. So I'm going to make these my last casts and then pack up and call it a day. But it's been another nice little session down Brighton Marine at Eastwall. More whiting than I could count and just the one dogfish. But considering the tides and conditions, I've been really happy with how it's gone. And that'll be it for today. And I'm hoping to get out again in a couple of days' time. Maybe come back down here or maybe hit the beach. I'll see how I'm feeling. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you've liked the video, please do consider clicking the like button. And I'd love it if you subscribe. And to all my subscribers, thank you again for signing up to this channel. Cheers, everybody. See you next time.